Hey, it's Mike from BrewDashNews.com. So this week, we're going to be going over the Lamont BrewLab Plus kit. In this little, this little blue package is all the reagents and the little tubes and all the testing devices that you need to determine how much calcium or magnesium and sodium and chloride and sulfate, all the good stuff that you need to know for your brewing water. It's all contained in this little kit that you can test at home. So I'm going to walk through all the little pieces. I'm going to show you the tests themselves. And then when we're done, we'll come back and we'll go over the results of the tests for each mineral, each salt, and compare it to a Ward Labs test result that I had done last year. And we'll see how close the kit comes to the Ward Lab results. And we'll see how, how, much, how co much confidence we have in this kit for testing our water at home which will hopefully help us brew better beer. So, let's get to it. So here's the Lamont uh, brew kit. It comes in this cool, soft, semi-rigid uh, blue carrying case. It's got a weird little handle on the back. I don't know if you'd really carry it around. But it zips open and you find inside the instructions for um, the kit itself, for all the little assays. And it's also got the instruction booklet for the pH meter, which is considerably thicker than the other one. Um, and that's the pH meter right there. It's just a single pro pH meter. And then um, th those are all the little reagents. There are little dropper bottles of different uh, chemical reagents. That's for the sulfate test. And then it's got a whole bunch of, uh, up in the lid, just these blister packs of other chemicals that you'll see when I do the tests that get dropped into samples of water for doing the tests. And uh, the kit comes with its own little sample tubes and that's one of the sample tubes that we'll do the tests in. All right, so the first test I'm gonna show you is the chloride test. So the um, instructions for this test are basically starts with five drops of chloride reagent A, which is gonna make the water look a little yellow. And then we're going to be adding um, dropwise and counting the drops of the silver nitrate. And the goal is to see the yellow color turn into like a rusty orange, rusty brown color. Um, when you're doing all these tests, you've got the option to do like a 25 ml sample or a 10 ml sample. Um, so the 10 ml sample will probably stretch your kit out a little bit. And the 25 ml sample is what I'm doing here just so it looks better on camera so there's more to see. So here's the, couple, the first drop of the silver nitrate going in there. You can see that orange color, but when you mix it up, it goes away. So that's the reactants um, mixing together and waiting to make this solid color. So I've sped up the video here so you don't need to count drops and watch me do all these drops, but you'll get the gist of what the color change looks like. So you can see every time I add it, it's getting more orange um, and we're almost there. So here's like some of the last few drops now that I've slowed it back down at normal speed. It's almost all the way there just sort of mixing it in. It's not quite a solid color yet. It's still got quite a bit of yellow there, so maybe one or two more drops of the silver nitrate and we will have the final color. So it's important to keep track of your drops because that's how you calculate the amount of chloride or uh, salt in any of these tests. There's a multiplication factor indicated in the instruction book for each one. So and there you go, a nice rusty orange color. So the next test is the sulfate test. So this is an interesting test. So this involves actually measuring turbidity. So um, into the water, a tablet is going to go in and you're going to use the tablet. It will react with sulfate in the water and create a turbid or less clear looking solution. Um, so I waited here for the camera to adjust focus going from the booklet page to the little tubes in the distance isn't the best thing for getting a nice clean video I guess but so the tablets come in these little blister packs you just pop open one of the blisters and uh, squeeze it into the water sample and this actually only uses 5 mls of water so um, I would recommend as you're gonna see here with this is to maybe crush the tablet up in the blister pack first um, because it took a long time to get this thing to dissolve in the water. I don't know what the chemical is, but um, I thought it would sort of dissolve right away, but it takes some time. Um, I'm trying to show it there in the camera. I'm gonna speed up the camera so you don't have to watch this nauseating amount of me trying to shake this uh, tablet into solution. 
but you see that little card on the table that I just pulled away it's a black and white card and so on one side of the card are these targets that you put the vial on on the right side and if the solution is turbid it'll look like one of the ones on the left so you're sort of eyeballing it and the resolution between each mark is about 50 ppm it goes 0, 50, 100 and up so you're not going to get super precise measurements for sulfate but it probably gets the job done it gets you in the ballpark to have an understanding of whether you got medium low or high sulfate water so in the end I decided that this was super clear still so it was probably zero ppm of sulfate so this test is the total alkalinity test which is going to be quantitated as calcium carbonate um, this test was kind of cool because it's a test where the solution goes from a um, greenish color to a red color so again just adding some stuff drop wise um, waiting for the camera to focus there we go so this just got three drops of um, this total alkalinity indicator they call it sort of being a little secretive but that's okay so swirl it up and you you know I found this color to be more blue than green but um, you get the point and then again it's just dropwise solutions I'll speed it up here a little bit so you don't have to watch me add uh, a ton of drops to the solution but you can see at the surface it starts to turn red and then I shake it out and the redness goes away and so you just keep going and counting drops again as before until you get a nice solid red color and then I'll show you here what in the end what a uh, positive result looks like almost there there it goes nice and red okay so this test now is for total hardness again expressed as calcium carbonate because that's the way water chemists like to do it especially when we're talking about water hardness and calcium levels so this test again is going to start with um, a solution to change the chemistry of the water I think this starts with some sodium hydroxide and then there's uh, some calcium hardness indicator tabs again the blister pack I bet you thought that tube was gonna roll right off the bench didn't you so put in another one of these little tubes this time I crushed the blister pack a little bit so it wasn't just a solid tablet so it would dissolve a little faster um, but I'll speed it up so I shake that baby into solution so you get this deep red color and it's, I thought it would be a little bit tough to see on camera despite the extra light in the scene but you're gonna see as we add this next reagent uh, drop wise um, it's going to get really dark before it actually turns a nice noticeable blue color so again we're just adding this drop wise and um, waiting for the blue color to come first I wasn't sure if this was the blue color but with any one of these types of um, color metric tests you want to keep adding until you're sure you've actually got the next color so now look at that you can see the drastic change all of a sudden it really goes to a nice blue color so that's total hardness expressed as calcium carbonate All right, here's the final test. This is calcium hardness. You need this to calculate how much calcium is actually in the water. So again, I've sped it up here just because now you've seen this four times. Um, I crushed the little red tablet so it dissolves a little faster into the liquid. And uh, this looks, the, the color is very similar to the last test we did, but the tablets are different. This, these tablets are specific for calcium hardness. So just adding the second reagent dropwise until it turns uh, that nice blue color. Um, this is an interesting test because you have to go dropwise here because it'll sort of get close like it is right now and then all of a sudden um, it just goes blue. Um, so if you were double dropping uh, it would, you might go right by it with an extra drop. But um, So I hope that uh, these little tests look pretty interesting and now you know what um, you've at least got this video to reference what the positive colors look like. Um, I've never seen one, anyone do one of these before, so I hope that you enjoyed this part of it. Um, doing these little color metric tests is, is pretty fun and interesting.
All right, hey, so that was cool. So I tried to show you each individual test and what it really looks like. Um, so the cool thing, each test seems to take like really less than four minutes, depending on, on how aggressive you need to be with adding your drops. I know that the, some of the hardness tests, going from that red to blue color, um, it looked like it was pretty dark on camera, but um, I think you can get the gist of it. Um, it's, it's, it's easier to see it in, in real life. Um, when you're doing drop-wise colorimetric tests like that, it's always best to um, slowly count your drops. Uh, and then once you think you're at the color, um, wait the allotted time. The kit wants you to wait 30 seconds to make sure that the color doesn't change again because it might slowly drift back to red. Um, but what's always good with a colorimetric test is add one more drop to see if you think you're at blue, add one more drop and it shouldn't get more blue, it should just stay blue. And so that's the, and then don't count that as one of your drops. So uh, that would be my only advice that isn't necessarily mentioned in the kit. Um, so, but let's see how we did result wise when we calculate the numbers. So um, in the book, there's some calculations for um, uh, converting hardness, like calcium hardness to calcium. So um, almost a year ago, nine months ago really, um, I had a test results done on our water. I sent water to Ward Labs, which is a really popular way for people to get their water tested. Um, so let's just run down the numbers and see how did the Lamont um, home water testing kit do versus sending it out to a big commercial lab. So the chloride, the Lamont, I calculated 330 ppms of chloride. And that's the biggest problem we have, John and I have here, brewing with our water, is this a lot of chloride. So when you're trying to, um, it works great maybe for New England IPAs, maybe that's why New England IPAs were born here, um, but 330 ppms of chloride, and the Ward Labs result was 264. So um, that's like pretty close for me. Um, sulfate, you saw in the sulfate test, that that little black and white uh, checker thing, it's, it's um, I really couldn't get a good way to get that on camera, but there's practically zero sulfate in our water, so I qualified that as being less than 50 ppm or zero ppm in between there. That's the two uh, marks on the card that I looked at. Um, and Ward Lab said I, was at, I have six ppm, so that's spot on the money. Uh, total alkalinity by the kit was 90 ppm. Ward Labs was 71. That's right on the kit. That's total alkalinity is calcium carbonate. Uh, total hardness, again, is calcium carbonate, 160 ppm. And then Ward Labs, 159 ppm. So that, those ones are totally spot on. I calculate out the amount of calcium. The Lamont tells me I've got 64 ppm of calcium. And the Ward Labs was 52 ppm of calcium. Again, right on the money. Sodium, uh, Lamont said I had 184 ppm of sodium and Ward Labs is 114. So that's probably the biggest spread that we have. Um, and then magnesium, you do a calculation. There's no test for magnesium here, but you're using the total calcium and the calcium hardness, total hardness and total calcium hardness to get to magnesium. And uh, Lamont said I was at zero and Ward Lab says I'm at seven, or actually it says less than seven. So, um, so that's pretty much spot on. Um, I was really surprised at how close all these numbers actually come out to the commercial numbers. And it has been a year, so those numbers have probably, you know, the water quality moves a little bit here. Um, I've had our water tested a, a couple of times, and um, it does fluctuate a little bit, but it's relatively pretty steady all year round here for us, thankfully, at least from a predictability standpoint. Um, the biggest trouble for us, like I said, was chloride, but also that high sodium is, is tough to deal with, and I, I think to some extent you can taste it in our water. Um, but I think, is a Lamont kit worth it? Seeing how close it was to the Ward Lab results, it's totally worth it. I think it's totally worth it to use one of these kits. Um, and you can get 50 plus tests out of this kit. So you could test your water every brew session or the night before each brew. You could test uh, once a month or something and track the numbers. Uh, there's plenty of kit tests in here to, for you to really get a good picture of what your water looks like annually, wherever you are. Um, I was really expecting that maybe the numbers wouldn't be close, but there'd be some general trends. I mean, more importantly, when I look at our numbers, if I didn't have the Ward, the Ward lab results, I know that chloride and cal uh, sodium, rather, from this result are pretty high, which, um, so that's just something that for you to think about in terms of the types of beers you brew or, or how you're gonna adjust your water accordingly. So, um, so Lamont, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, it's absolutely a great kit. I would totally recommend giving it a try. And more importantly, um, doing drop-wise colorimetric um, chemistry like that, 
uh, it's a great way to get the kids involved because they, they would have fun with the, all the, you know, the, the dropping and the colors and you wait until the color changes. It's a pretty cool thing to see for a kid who doesn't have any experience with chemistry. So um, I think that's really an added bonus from the kit. Now in this kit, there is a pH meter, but the pH meter um, has been sitting in this kit for a little bit and it's a little bit crusty and I really need to get some RO or some distilled water and give it a good soak to let it clean itself out. Um, I can go get some of that at work or at the grocery store. I can get RO water. I just don't have any on hand. So, um, but that, I mean, pH of the water isn't really important to know because it's pretty tightly regulated as it comes down the pipes. Um, but I will try to be using that in future videos for doing mash pH. And that's really the important thing for that. So this was really more about water and um, giving the kid a try and comparing it to commercial results. So I'm pretty excited. Um, I will be using this again to uh, test the water uh, maybe a few months from now and see how much it drifts as we come out of winter, maybe go into spring, and then I'll test it in late summer and just get an idea of if these things are moving at all. So, um, so for Mike, on behalf of John, those of us at brew-news.com, get yourself a Lamont kit. Um, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. Uh, you can always go to brew-news.com on our contact page to send us a message. As always, put your comments in the comments. Brew on.